Give us a status report as of right now. What's going on down there in North Carolina, South Carolina, or through the southeast? Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, we're, we're seeing widespread uh, flooding that's affecting um, not only the coastal regions, but we're seeing things affected even further inland, I think, than we expected. And uh, things continue to deteriorate. I think we're expecting probably another day or two before things get to the point to where they'll start to recover uh, and we'll be able to move product into those areas. And so it is creating a lot of uh, disruption, not only to the coastal regions, but even a couple hundred miles inland. So, Eric, you not only use other people's trucks, you own a fair number of your own trucks, as I understand it. Did you get your, all, all your trucks out of that region so you have not actually lost a lot of equipment? Um, for the most part. I mean, we had some trailers and stuff that were still near the coastal regions, but for the most part, anytime we see these storms, we usually try to move equipment back inland to uh, position them. So as soon as the storm uh, moves away, we're able to move equipment back into the storm area because we typically spend a couple of weeks in the recovery uh, working with our customers, trying to get product back into the to the storm uh, hit areas as quick as possible. Uh, the other story, Eric, in the market during this time is that it's hitting in a very tight labor market. It. Can your workers actually get to work and are you competing uh, for staff because there's going to be a reconstruction effort? Right. Yeah, we saw that last year in Houston. So Houston became a very, very tough hiring market for us probably within a couple of weeks after the storm. And I anticipate the same thing as there's a rebuilding effort. We compete directly for, with uh, construction. So as construction starts to go into a re rebuilding um, at time, then that really does affect uh, our ability to hire in those markets. And so that's absolutely an issue. So that comes on top of what you've had is something of a challenge already. Last time we had you on, you were talking about how difficult it is, particularly in part because of lifestyle issues. Uh, how difficult, is that eased up any at all, your ability to get new truckers? Not at all. If anything, I would say it's actually continued to deteriorate. So as we sit below 4% unemployment, you see construction, manufacturing, warehousing, markets that we compete directly against, uh, hiring at record levels, it's really creating a lot of pressure on our industry. So we're trying to do everything we can to, to provide uh, new opportunities or come up with, um, you know, unique type of benefits or things to attract new drivers. Hey, Eric, for the broader macro backdrop here, we have this trade battle that keeps progressing between China and the U.S. How does that affect your business? It definitely affects on the equipment side. So we're seeing the cost of trailers, the, qu the cost of tractors start to go up. Um, from a shipping standpoint, I'm not seeing a lot of, uh, of our customers necessarily affected. One thing we are seeing, though, is a lot of our customers have ordered product earlier out of Asia than maybe what they typically would for the peak season going into the holiday season. So certain people thinking they can get out in front of the tariffs by ordering early, which is a good thing for us because that will only extend our uh, peak season, which is typically November 1st into Christmas season, and we think that'll, that'll extend it because of some of this early ordering. So, Eric, as we go into this Christmas season, if you can put aside trade, you can put aside the consequences of Hurricane Florence, two big things to put aside. What does your business tell us about how the U.S. economy is doing overall? What's the overall demand for shipment of product right now in the United States? Oh, it's extremely strong. I mean, we're seeing demand probably the strongest levels in our business since probably 2004, 2005. Um, so we're seeing a very robust uh, environment, and that's coupled in our industry with a very, very tight supply market with uh, for drivers. And so we're, we're seeing that market continue to be robust, and I don't anticipate that changing in the near term. Uh, well, a lot of what we talk about when it comes to, say, trade in the consumer is pricing power, and one companies are able to pass through their prices. How do you deal with that? and what have you noticed from your clients? Um, we are finding the ability to pass along any kind of increases uh, to our customers. Um, at, for the most part, our customers are aware of the driver situation and are concerned enough about being able to find capacity that they are understanding for the most part on any type of increases that we are, are asking for from a, uh, from a pay standpoint. So really where, uh, where our customers are more focused around is making sure that they have capacity, making sure that they they are comfortable that they're going to have a truck whenever they have freight that needs to be moved. So, Eric, do you see any difference in demand geographically? Are some regions more robust from where, where you sit right now than others in the United States? 
Uh, we, we have seen it a little bit. Uh, we've seen some weakness out on the West Coast, though recently as products uh, coming off of uh, the ships from Asia, we are seeing uh, the West Coast start to pick up. I think partially that's because people are ordering early, whether it be tariffs or trying to get out ahead of any kind of peak season surge. Um, but the interesting thing with these storms is they don't just affect the coastal regions. They actually affect the entire supply chain. So mm-hmm. um, the truck capacity in California will actually be affected by the storm that actually hit the Carolinas. And so it really does disrupt the entire nation. 